I'm sorry. I'm sorry you don't like watching me play. Is it not fast enough? Rough enough? Good enough? I'm sorry that you think I should be paid less for the same effort. I'm sorry I don't lift enough for you. That I have to fight. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you don't like watching me play. Is it not fast enough? Rough enough? Good enough? I'm sorry that you think I should be paid less for the same effort. I'm sorry I don't lift enough for you. That I have to fight harder. I'm sorry for pushing myself to become better. For wanting this as much as anybody else. I'm sorry for caring about the way I look and switching it up, and switching again, and then again. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I make you feel uncomfortable? I'm sorry that my long lashes have given you the idea that I can't run fast. I'm sorry that my skills have surprised you, considering my gender. I'm sorry that you thought I couldn't catch a ball. I'm sorry for being motivated towards my impossible I'm sorry goals. For pushing myself. I'm sorry for being weak. I'm sorry for being emotional. I'm, I'm sorry for having big dreams and wanting this as much I'm as I'm sorry for holding on to I'm the sorry that I believe. You thought I was I'm important. sorry I can dream as big as I'm I sorry want. that you don't believe in me! Nah. You know what? I ain't sorry for nothing. Wow. <laughs> so we are live. Uh, we may have a few technical glitches, but stick with us. Uh, we'll get through this together. That was a powerful video. Did anyone else feel that right here? Amazing video. My name is Catherine Dines. This is my first time hosting Conversations at the Royal presented by TD. Exciting. Thank you for all, all of you for being here. Uh, this is going to be a, a very dynamic, empowering hour. We are doing this in celebration of International Women's Week. Um, I am an announcer with uh, Move 100 Radio here in Ottawa. And of course, I have a lifetime of dealing with mental illness. Um, several diagnoses, uh, but uh, most recently complex PTSD. So mental health, uh, especially for women, I have two daughters, uh, is very important to me. So this is, uh, I'm very honored to be able to be part of this and to be joined by such amazing speakers. Three amazing speakers uh, that I'll be introducing shortly, one by one. And uh, we're going to do a quick Q&A at the end. So get your questions ready. You can type them into the chat box to the right. If at any time you feel like your video is freezing up, you can uh, refresh your browser and that should fix it. But the very first thing we need to do is say a huge thank you to our presenting sponsor, TD, for their generosity. And they presented uh, this video for us to share with you. Hello, everyone. My name is Tara Lynn Hughes, Senior Vice President with TD Bank. We're so proud at TD to be the presenting sponsor of Conversations at the Royal. This speaker series is about bringing critical mental health tools, resources, and care to people in need. Never has this been more important. Living through a pandemic has put challenges. Hello everyone, my name is Tara Lynn Hughes, Senior Vice President with TD Bank. We're so proud at TD to be the presenting sponsor of Conversations at the Royal. This speaker series is about bringing critical mental health tools, resources, and care to people in need. Never has this been more important. Living through a pandemic has put challenges in front of Canadians that we've never experienced. And every day at TD, I can see it's testing the mental health and emotional well being of our employees, our customers, and our communities. That's why conversations around wellness and mental health must be a priority. As always, the Royal Ottawa Foundation is standing tall, and I want to thank them for organizing this important series of virtual monthly events. I believe the Royal and TD share common goals, 
and that's to advance better health and contribute to open, inclusive, respectful, and dignified conversations that promote recovery and break down stigma. Today and every day, we'll continue to stand together, support each other, and be resilient as we move forward in 2021. On behalf of all of us at TD, thank you for your support and for participating in these very meaningful conversations. Take care everyone and be well. Thank you again to presenting sponsor TD. I'm Catherine Dines. So there is uh, some information you might find helpful below the video player. I'm going to uh, outline our three speakers before we start introducing them. Uh, we'll begin our discussion with uh, Anne-Marie O'Brien, social worker, community mental health program, Women's Mental Health Center at the Royal. Uh, Anne-Marie will be talking about the Women's Mental Health Program and she'll be providing some advice that she's learned from her experience Experience as key lead of this program. Then we'll hear from Claudette Kane Kulas, uh, former Gloucester mayor, and she's going to share her personal mental health journey while holding very prominent positions in our community. And then our final speaker will be an interview between Jillian Dawson and myself. Uh, we'll be talking about the upcoming Run for Women that will be happening this July. So we're going to start uh, by welcoming our first speaker, Anne-Marie O'Brien, a registered social worker with a broad range of clinical, administrative, and academic experience. Currently, Anne-Marie is the lead for mental health, women's mental health, a uh, board member on the Ottawa Coalition to End Violence Against Women, and the chair of the University of Ottawa Institute of Mental Health Research Ethics Board. So thank you, Anne-Marie, for being here. As always, you are so helpful. Well, thank you, Catherine. I am really humbled and feel very privileged to share this space with, with these um, uh, smart, strong, and compassionate women. You know, I want to start by just acknowledging we have all endured a really hard year. Starting in March 2020, it has been unprecedented. And we've all learned so much about ourselves, our families, communities, and our mental health. And one of the things that I've noticed is that simple question, how are you? How are you doing? it's taken on a meaning and significance that was lacking. And all of a sudden on Zoom calls with family and friends, we're getting a lot more authentic responses. And folks that have maybe taken the mental health and well-being for granted are noticing vulnerabilities. And it's in these spaces of Zoom and WhatsApp and FaceTime that we're normalizing conversations about mental health and well-being. And that's a very positive change because we all have mental health issues. It's a function of being human. So in the next couple of minutes, I'm going to talk specifically about women's mental health. And as March is Social Work Month and I'm a social worker, I'm going to be speaking specifically about those social factors that influence women's mental health. And when in, within those social factors, there's protective factors and there's risk factors. And I'm going to talk about both. So women's mental health. First of all, unpaid labor. It's estimated that worldwide women do up to 70% of the unpaid labor that keeps our homes, offices, communities ticking over. A big chunk of that unpaid labor is caregiving. And I want to make a point about caregiving. It's not the giving of care that is the labor. That's the love. That's the good stuff. The labor is the thinking about it, worrying about it, organizing it, planning it, navigating systems, finding resources, and checking in afterwards. Was I effective? Did I do enough? What do I have to change? And starting all over again. When we frame the giving of care as the labor, we frame the recipient of care as the burden. And that's not fair and it's not accurate. 
In my 35 years of social work practice, I've never met a family that would talk about their loved one as the burden. So it's important to keep in mind. The next set of factors that influence women's mental health has to do with women at work. Women in Canada make about 80 cents to every dollar a man makes, about 20% less. What does this mean? It means that women are more likely to have precarious employment, interrupted employment, less likely to have benefits. This means we're more likely to spend our senior years in poverty. Women are less likely to have benefits and more likely to go to work sick because we don't have paid sick days. Even for women that have good paying jobs with benefits, there is significant um, differential between our experience and our male counterparts. And Robin Doolittle in the Globe and Mail has written a great series on the power gap. And I'd really encourage you to read that because there are significant inequities. So these, these factors of a precarious employment underpaid and the addition of um, unpaid labor really adds to um, significant mental health distress for women. Another point is gender-based violence. This is pervasive. Sexual harassment at work is pervasive. And we have read and are, are these, these inequities, these disparities, these struggles are much more top of mind during the pandemic. For women living with mental health issues, they are, are at greater risk of experiencing gender-based violence. They're also less likely to report it and less likely to believe, be believed when they do report it. And we have a lot of work to do to redress uh, these injustices. The 2019 Business Book of the Year was entitled Invisible Women. And it was written by Caroline Serrata Perez. And in this book, she brilliantly describes how we are living in a man's world. The data that's used for planning our built environment, our social environment, our health care is based on data that is, excludes women. And so continually, we have the experience of men as normative, women exceptional. And women pay the burden of making um, space for our realities in a man's world. That contributes to mental distress on our part as well. So I've talked a fair bit about risk factors. What about protective factors? That's where women's mental health at the Royal comes in. The protective part of our social experiences is our relationships, our healthy, supportive relationships. And in women's mental health at the Royal, we create safe spaces virtually now for women to come together to authenticate, to validate our experience, to make sense of mental health issues, to begin to get our life back, to reclaim our power and um, our purpose in life all the time while living with mental health issues. This work, doing this work is a privilege and I love it. And I'm so grateful for all the support we have. And so with that, I'm going to pass it on. Thank you for joining us today and really enjoy the rest of the time. Thank you. Thank you, Anne-Marie. That was so, uh, so informative and I don't know. I. We have a lot of work to do. <laughs> like oh. we have a lot of work to do. Indeed we do. I related so much to so much uh, of what you just said. Um, as a single mom to two daughters for the last 18 years, it's been quite a journey. Um, the stories I could tell, wait for the book, it's coming. <laughs> so thank you, Anne-Marie. That was, that was amazing. Uh, we're now going to introduce former Gloucester Mayor Claudette Kane Kulas. So Gloucester, of course, the fastest growing city in Canada. And uh, Claudette Kane Kulas is now the author of Ladies, 
take your place, leave your mark politically, professionally, and personally. Claudette uh, helps passionate women become the CEO of their own lives. I love that. And uh, make a dramatic difference in the lives of others. Thank you, Claudette, for being here. Thank you, Catherine. It's great to be here. And thanks for your kind words. Well, happy International Women's Week, ladies. And to all of us women here and around the world, it's our turn to shine. But let's keep on making a dramatic difference in the world like so many passionate women do every single day. Bon anniversaire à tous les dames, les filles et fillettes ici et à travers le monde. Je suis tellement fière de vous adresser la parole aujourd'hui. I've chosen today, during International Women's Week, to publicly reveal my dirty little secret. It's still pretty scary for me to talk about my own uh, personal journey with mental illness, especially in such a public way. I retired last year so that I could finally do my part to create awareness and break down the critical, the crippling barriers um, surrounding mental illness. So my only hope today is that you'll gain a few gold nuggets that might be able to help you in the future. I've alluded to my mental health a couple of times in the past, but the stigma around mental illness, even to this day, held me back from publicly sharing my gift of desperation, the effects of mental illness on my life. You know, it does not have to be a death sentence if one has the support and the proper treatment so critical to recovery. That's one of the reasons I say thank God for the Royal. And it's also the reason I've chosen to support mental health, women's mental health at the Royal. So proceeds of my book and the business around my book will be shared with, with them. Now, COVID has put such a damper on our lives, but now we've got the vaccines discovered in record time and we're saving lives in the country and throughout the world. So it's exciting. But I don't know about you. I don't know how excited you can get about staying in your house 24 seven for and locked down for 28 days and then a couple more 28 days. And here we are past 365 days and we're wondering what the heck happened here. I've cleaned my closets out three or four times already. I've cooked enough food for two years in my freezer and I've taken apart all my photo albums and classified them by friends, family, and you name it. So it's a little wonder that people are a little bit skeptical about what's in store for us for the rest of 2021 and 2022. I'm now in my fifth career and I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. Actually, I have been so blessed in my life. As an entrepreneur, twice, then winning five consecutive elections, three terms as mayor of the city of Gloucester, and I also spent uh, almost over a little two years, two and a half years in the Ottawa media when I had my own television show on Rogers and my own radio program on CFRA and writing a column for The Sun all at the same time. In the last 17 years, I've been a member of the judiciary for the Ontario Court of Justice. And a tremendous source of pride for me is a two mile long waterfront park in Riverside South named after me. And it's named at the request of the residents of Gloucester. So that's truly humbling. And yes, I'm writing a book about to help women become the best version of themselves. We should launch in a couple months and Mayor Watson has invited me to have the launch at City Hall, so that's great. You know, the world needs us. We all need more women, not only in public life, but in the boardrooms and the courtrooms and in every complex 
decision-making rooms on the planet. His Excellency Kofi Annan, the seventh Secretary General of the United Nations and a Nobel Peace Prize recipient said, and I quote, study after study has taught us there is no tool for development more effective than the empowerment of women. Wow, what a mighty validation of our strengths, our courage and our determination. It reminds me a bit of the story about the good entrepreneur who jumps off a cliff and builds an airplane on her way down. Je suis choyée d'avoir eu le privilège de servir ma communauté pendant presque quatre décennies. Même après avoir souffert d'une maladie mentale comme jeune femme, c'était un temps effrayant dans ma vie. You know, I recognize how very fortunate I am to have held the positions of trust that I did for almost four decades. In spite of having battled the ravaging demons of mental illness three times before the age of 25. I had no idea what was happening to me. It was like being stuck in quicksand with your hands up in the air, praying that I wouldn't go down into oblivion. But that's exactly what, what happened to me. There I said it, finally, openly. Yet, I still believe everything <clears throat> happens for a reason. Something happened here. Yet I still believe everything happens for a reason. And having gone through the hell hole of despair, I really have a special place in my heart for anyone suffering from a mental illness. Can you imagine just for a minute knowing someone running a multi-million dollar corporation like the city of Gloucester for almost 20 years and commanding a courtroom for over 17 years after living through the emotional shock and madness of such psychological breakdowns? Most people would think it couldn't be done. Well, I did it, and so have many others. And I did it with passion and resolve and with my credibility intact. Not unlike many successful men and women who are living with a mental disorder. They're successful because just like it takes a village to raise a child, it takes a tremendous support system, medically, emotionally, and physically to be on top of your game while living with a mental illness. What we have to do is prioritize our own wellness and have a solid self-care plan. And having a trusted mentor or a coach can help you make enormous breakthroughs in your life. Joan Baez, the famous folk singer and civil rights activist, was right on when she said, and I quote, only you and I can help the sun rise each and every morning. And if we don't, we may drench it, it may drench itself in sorrow. Now with all the trauma behind me, I hear you when you say you don't wanna face the day or the bills or your partner or even your kids, because I've been there and I do understand. If you haven't lived through the darkness of deep depression, I'm really happy for you. The World Health Organization states that mental disorders is one of the leading causes of ill health globally, affecting 450 million people currently in the world. Incredible, isn't it? And so you may be wondering, what's my point? What's my point in sharing my life success, my successes, and the shameful times when I hid from people because I was in the midst of the terrible dark thoughts and delusions, which were very real to me. Well, I'm living proof 
that one can live a joyful and productive life even after succumbing to the horrific horrors or pain of mental breakdowns. I continue to trust my medical caregivers for helping me be well and for giving me the tools to be able to live my life with passion and determination. And I'm hoping that something I've shared will strike a chord with you. And the main point I want to make is to drive home is that life is not about personal power. I've had plenty of that. It's about empowering others to be the best version of themselves. Now you did not come this far to only come this far, right? And that's why I say to women all the time, fortune favors the brave. And you have to be brave and bold to invest in yourself, and in your own personal development. My work now is dedicated to helping women see their true potential, especially when they have no idea where to start. If you want to be a trusted influencer, you have to be courageous enough to let people in so they can see that you really are the real deal. Now we know empowered women can make a dramatic difference in the world without compromising our integrity, without being seasoned public speakers, and without having all the answers at our fingertips. And I'd like to help you, no matter what it is you want to do with your life. And so I'm offering to the first 10 women who contact me a free coaching call and a copy of my book. It's no secret that the most successful people in the world have a coach. And they wouldn't make a move, most of them, without checking in with their coach. And so maybe I can help you get started on becoming the CEO of your own life. We are so blessed to have the Royal and all its professionals and programs right here in the nation's capital. And I'm proud to be associated with the fine people who make the Royal such a success story. The fallout from COVID alone uh, is enough to bring on clinical depression, anxiety, and fear. And many of us have tried to keep busy a gazillion ways, but we're not superhuman. Just know that we're not alone and help is available to you and I and to anyone you know who is suffering right now. And so to my sponsors, Chris Single from the Richcraft Homes, Suzanne Robinson of Century 21, Kathy McMillan of McMillan Wealth Solutions, Alana Dennett of the Royal LaPage Realty, and my premier partner, Dan Bedard of the Eastway Group of Companies, my deepest gratitude for your generosity, for your support, and for your compassion towards women for mental health at the Royal. And to all of you listening today, my very best wishes for the rest of 2021 and 2022. J'espère bien vous rencontrer en personne bientôt. Et je vous remercie du fond du cœur d'avoir pour votre présence ici aujourd'hui. So thank you for giving me the my very first real public opportunity to create awareness and to tear away the barriers around mental illness. As difficult as it was, I'm truly grateful, but I'm not sorry for anything, as the opening video said to us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claudette King Kulas. That was so inspiring. What a beautiful gift you're giving everyone today. Uh, I just wanted to, I, I relate so much to what you said about um, those dark places. Uh, I grew up in the Maritimes and I landed in Ottawa in the early 90s. The resources that are available to people here are incredible. And I think part of the battle for some people trying to find those resources is, is getting stuck. As you know, when you're stuck in that spiral, when you're stuck in the quicksand, as you described it, it can be... It can be such a drowning feeling when you're trying to get out of it. Not everybody is fortunate to have support, but I would also say 
keep advocating for yourself. Keep trying. Don't give up uh, until you find what works for you. I was only diagnosed with complex PTSD about a year ago, which explained so much of why I had continuing issues. You, you really, the more you know, the more empowered you are, because then you can, you can go at things with a different point of view. You can understand your own life and why you do some of the things you do. And it's so much easier once you, you have that, that knowledge and support. So thank you. And I think it's very important for women to reach out, but also I need to say that as women, so many of us have been taught to be quiet, to be small, it continues to happen today. And I think some people don't even realize those are the messages they're passing on. Sometimes it happens through osmosis. So I think what you just said gives everyone permission, all women permission to be loud and be in their own space and own their own space and not apologize for wanting to be their best selves, right? So thank you for that. That was so inspiring. All right, so this is so exciting. I'm so happy that uh, we're doing this today. So Jillian Dawson is next, but before uh, Jillian and I do a QA, and a I want to share uh, this video. Jillian's gonna speak to this as well, but this is an exciting video. If you've been part of the Run for Women, you know how amazing it is. If you haven't, well, I just just do it. Join us, it's amazing. So we'll we'll play the video first. If we touch women, we touch the family. As women, we're expected to do it all. Sometimes you need to ask for help. When I had my son, I experienced postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety, and psychosis symptoms. We really wanted to do an empowering event. Exercise acts like an antidepressant for a lot of people, especially people who have mild to moderate depression. Who's pumped to run? Woo! Now I'm back to myself, a mom to the most amazing little boy, whom I love more than words can describe. All of you have transformed mental health. Wow, the run for women is pretty exciting. I'm going to introduce now Jillian Dawson, uh, volunteer extraordinaire. So uh, Jillian has been a volunteer with the Royals Foundation for the past 17 years. She's contributed greatly to the Royal, particularly with the Royal Shoppers Love You Run for Women. Uh, most recently, Jillian was instrumental in leading the largest run for women team in 2020. And the run for women just keeps growing every year. Every year breaks a new record. Uh, Jillian has inspired many people to become involved. She believes very strongly uh, in the impact it has on our community, our fellow Canadians. Um, Jillian's personal family connection to mental illness and the Royal from decades ago continues to drive her determination to change the landscape of mental illness and be part of transforming women's mental health in Canada. So hi, Jillian. Welcome. Hi, Catherine. I'm really Thank great. To be here today yeah thank you for for taking the time this is awesome to have so many amazing women here today so um the first question what inspired you to become involved with the royal so the royal is a very special place to me it's a very special place to many people in this community um, so many people have been affected by the work of the royal both the hospital and uh, the institute uh, the research center aspect um, the Royal has saved the lives of people I know, of my friends, uh, of my father. And so my connection to the Royal is really personal. Um, as a young child, you, some of you may not remember the old Royal, the original Royal, which looked very different than the beautiful building today. But I walked those halls as a child many times, um, and it looked very different back then. And so... Um, 
you know, I, I have this deep connection um, that goes so far back. And then, you know, fast forward to 2000s when I found myself back at the Royal um, for work at the time. And when I was there, I saw the face of a young woman named Heather. And Heather was the, there's Heather. Um, Heather's face was the first face uh, that we put to mental health. She put her hand up and said, yeah, I will be the poster child for mental health through the You Know Who I Am campaign, which I give the Royal so much credit for because that was the first time we really put faces uh, to mental health. And when I saw Heather, I was, you know, I thought I need to do more. Um, and that's when I started to get involved uh, with the Royal. To be honest and to be frank, I was very, uh, sad about my dad's mental health. And um, I was very sad that we kept his story a secret. Um, it was time to do something. And um, speaking today, as you can hear by my voice, is hard for me. It's part of my journey. As Claudette said, like, today I'm letting you in. Um, and part of that is is through the community of Run for Women. Uh, so I'm just so thrilled to be here and talk about the Royal and talk about the run and the impact that it can, it has had and continue to have on this community. Amazing. Well, we're very grateful that you, you are part of this. Um, you've been part of the run for women uh, since the beginning. Uh, why is this event? I guess you've just explained why it's so important. Is there anything you want to add to that? Yeah, like that definitely. Event? So I like to refer to it as the walk run for women. I know it's called the run for women, but it's I really, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's really the walk, run, saunter, and just be there for women's mental health. Um, you know, I, I, I've been part of this because quite frankly, you know, when I reflect back on walking through the ha halls of the Royal, at that time, and as a young woman, I could have never imagined us running for women's mental health. I could never have imagined the brave women who put their faces on that video talking about deep issues like postpartum depression. Um, so I'm here for those people. I'm here because I also like running. Um, running for me keeps my mind calm. I was a little bit afraid to do this today. And so this morning I went for a run and it just refreshed me and reset me. It makes me feel calm. It makes me tune into the abundance in my life. And it is part of my own mental health self-care. So it was a natural fit for the role to say, hey, Jillian, you know, do you want to get involved with the, the run? Um, I also run, and this will probably resonate with you, Catherine, as an, to be an example for my daughter. Um, to be an example of self-love and self-care, because I really believe we need more of those things as women. I love this picture. Uh, it, uh, it makes my heart smile so much. Um, there's a bit of irony in this picture though. So when this picture was taken, my daughter was three. And um, at the time I had a different construct in my head. Uh, I was trying to model exercise, strength, and community to my daughter. Um, over time, my message to her has changed, and it's just part of my journey, my recovery, part of what I'm learning as I talk to you today. Um, my message to her is not finish strong, <laughs> actually. Uh, that's the irony. Um, my message to her is that it takes strength to show up to be seen, to be vulnerable, to let people in, as Claudette said. Um, and it takes strength to stand up for other people uh, and say, you know, I'm here to help you, um, to not judge them, but to just be with them. I really feel like we have an opportunity to create environments amongst our friends, our family, our workplaces, our neighborhood, where people can ask for help without fear of judgment or reprisal. So being strong to me is not about crossing the finish line fast or crossing the finish line at all. Um, it's about taking a stand for people who um, can sh show up and be seen for who they are. It's about facilitating help. So I'm inspired by the run for these reasons. I'm inspired by the run 
for the run by the people, the women on the video. And I'm inspired by the run, you know, by the strong people that are around me. These are moms who have lost children. Uh, these are moms who are returning to work with anxiety, with that pressure Anne-Marie described, you know, of having to do, having to do it all, um, having anxiety about the demands of work and home. Um, these are women that feel like they're not good enough because they are indoctrinated by facades of what they see women should be on social media. These are women who have suffered domestic violence, uh, you know, sexual abuse, uh, women who have tried, and I know these women, to take their own lives. I'm sure you know people like this too. I do this for them and I do this for myself because this is important work, having these conversations today. <laughs> these yeah. women, they're among us. You know this, Catherine. Um, they're in our houses. They're on our streets. They're in our workplaces. Um, and I do this because I want to stand up with them and say, I'm here for you, and we're all in this together. And that's part of why the Royal is actually really important community too for me it's like a safe space and Amory talked about protective factors and the royal is like my place where i can be comfortable talking about mental health sharing about mental health it's a community i've made some amazing friendships through the royal and through the run um it's uh it's created a really great community for me the run for women in my workplace, um, I've met people through social media that have become friends and lifelines who send me little notes to say, how are you doing today? I haven't heard from you. Uh, and that means so much to me. So there's so many reasons um, to be inspired by the Run for Women and they're more than just running and walking, Catherine. Yeah. I think you answered the last question too by by saying all that, just, you know, why should others be involved? It's It's very clear. It's, yeah it's, it's an it's an important i think we're stronger together when we when we help each other right when we have stronger communities it it, it helps everybody whether you have a mental i'm starting to get sniffly sorry um it is tough it is tough um uh there's still a lot of shame people still carry a lot of shame for um for, for being diagnosed with mental illness or having mental health issues for whatever reason, everybody's different. And I think taking that judgment out of the equation is really important. I think it's really important for all of us to remember it doesn't matter. Everybody's story is different. Everybody yeah. deserves to be healthy. Everybody has to find that path. Um, running is awesome for you, but we know that it takes a combination of things. It's not just, you know, we know that, right? Um, one thing that I've noticed with my daughters, uh, yes, I did the same thing. I dr dragged them to all these fundraisers and tried to set good examples. And as they grew, they're now like, my kids are now 18 and 21. And their own mental health issues evolved. And I never thought that would be a thing because I thought, I'm so woke. I've got all this experience. They're going to they're gonna be great. They're going to avoid all this. They're still human beings. And I had to change my approach, you know, and they started saying, we, we get anxious when we go to these things with you. We don't want to do that anymore. I had to recognize that, oh, okay. So my, my messaging and the way I approach my own kids changed too. Like there's so many, so many good reasons you learn by these conversations. You learn by going to the run for women. You meet people, you meet other people you can relate to, maybe make friendships for life, right? Absolutely. That's amazing. Yeah. I know. Thank you. Thank you. For, it is tough. And thank you so much for being vulnerable. It's, it's mm -hmm. a, it's a gift. Again, it's a gift that you're sharing right now for everyone. And so it's very appreciated, deeply appreciated. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you, Jillian Dawson. Um, so uh, we, we do have a special uh, offer today. Anybody here who wants $5 off your run for women registration you can do that you can get that you can enter the coupon code strong women 21 at the checkout so the code will be valid until march 14th uh, there's a link to sign up 
and the code uh, that can be found on the event page in the tab run for women um, so now we're going to uh, do a few questions from the audience so uh, you can Type those questions in the chat box on the right of your screen. And we're going to do our best to get to as many questions as possible. So um, I'm just going to take them from my, it's easier for me to read them off my phone. They're being text to me. So um, I'm going to start with, it looks like, okay, let's start with questions for Anne Marie. Um, so Sarah in Ottawa asks, Anne-Marie, what do you think is the biggest issue facing women today? Oh, my God. That is an <laughs> yeah, enormous I question. That is a huge question. I've spoken about the social factors, and you could pick any, any one of them. As I'm listening to stories, one of the things that's resonated with me is the shame and stigma that women carry and the important thing about that is that that's learned that's learned that didn't come with birth that was those were messages that we were given by others and so if we were part of creating a world of kindness without judgment where women's subjective experiences were honored and validated where women did not have to be brave to speak our truth. We say, oh, they're brave, they're brave. They're, we're brave because we know that our truth is not the dominant discourse. Our truth is not the normative. And what we want for our daughters and granddaughters is a world where we don't have to be brave, where we have a place of honor because we are speaking. And when we see awesome women like Kamala Harris say, I'm speaking, I kind of practice that. I'm speaking. Or we have Selena Chavez say, can you hear me now? Really noticing that and valuing it and protecting it and supporting each other in our own subjective realities and, and including our mental health challenges, right? And resisting and challenging people that play the mental health card because we're all afraid of it. Mm -hmm. We're all afraid of being vulnerable and someone playing the mental health card. Oh, well, you know. No, challenge that in our personal lives every single opportunity we get. So I, we got a lot of questions. That's my two cents on the biggest issues. And just so everyone's clear, I get anxious every time I do something like this. So, you know, and I, I'm a, I do this for a living, but I still. Uh, we have a very good question from Mike in Ottawa. He wants to know how COVID will impact Run for Women. So we should clear that up right now. Right. So, so we had, uh, starting last year, a virtual run and what I love about this is that we all run in our own space our own neighborhood run walk stroll uh, one of the women I love was out in her wheelchair because she's gonna participate and she's been in her apartment in her wheelchair for a year and she registered and got out and and went around um, in her chair so it's a virtual run this year. Please join us. Please sign up. And uh, it will be virtual. All I, at, People will run in their own neighborhoods. So we're not 3,000 people meeting at the Aviation Museum. We're 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 people Five? in our own neighborhood. Yeah. Hopefully more this year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I have to say last year, so one of the beautiful things too about the virtual run, our team decided, I said, if we're going to do this, we did it physically distanced. Uh, but I said, let's pick a route, a really pretty route. And we went along the water. We went along the Rideau and I was like, it was beautiful. So it was very extra inspiring. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. 
we have a question here uh, for Clara King Kulas uh, from Erin in Canada. She asks, as a judge and former mayor, have you seen an increase in female empowerment over the years? Uh, more women helping women, essentially. Um, you know, the, the best way, I guess, to answer that is yes and no, because we're, we're still in a man's world. There's no doubt about it. And um, even though in the last federal election here in Canada, we elected the most women ever in our country's history to, um, to the, our federal parliament, but we're still only at 28% of all those parliamentarians. You know, so I think we've got a long way. We've come a long way, but we've got a long way to go we, before we are masters of our own destiny. Um, we're still, uh, the 2020 Mercer report says we're at 13% uh, of women in executive roles and 16% in senior management roles. Like, give me a break, you know? I mean, uh, not only do we not get paid equally, we, we just not, we're just not getting there fast enough. And, and we have to use our voice a lot more. I agree. All right. Uh, Jen from Rockland wants to know if people can volunteer at the women's program at the Royal. Yes, uh, we, we um, are particularly interested in women with lived experience of mental illness, treatment and recovery. And we find this life experience of three, illness, treatment and recovery, really provides authenticity to other women who are earlier on in their recovery uh, processes. So we're, we are having a special call out to, to women that have lived experience. And uh, we welcome volunteers. You know, one of the upsides, it's kind of, of, of COVID, we were running out of space at the Royal, quite frankly. And being online, we can provide more groups with more volunteers. And uh, we're making the best of it that way. So thanks for, the, thanks for your interest. Uh, we have another question from Joanne. Uh, she wants to know if she should make her own run for women team or should she join a team? Either are good. I know that um, my, my dear, lovely colleague, Tracy Welsh, is going to say, be a captain and get everybody <laughs> you know on your team and you're going to have a great time. And, um, and that's what I know my colleague Tracy wants me to tell you. Me, thank you for joining up, and I love whatever is going to work for you. So there you go. If, if you're going to quote Tracy, you need pom-poms, and you need to jump up and down. She's like the most I know, right? It's like, woo! She's the most enthusiastic cheerleader for mental health I've ever met. It's amazing. She's, she's so amazing. So, um, yeah, yeah. I have a yeah. team too, if anybody wants to join. Actually, I have to go sign my team up. So this is a good reminder. I'm, I'm behind. But we have, I have to the know. Hurricanes. I have the Hurricanes team. Oh, awesome. Anybody wants to join, give me join a call. Adam's team. And, and someone wants to join Anne-Marie's team. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, okay. So Claudette, another question for you from Natasha. She wants to know, this is going to be hard. What is your single best piece of advice uh, for women entering politics? Oh. Um, be aware that you're enough. Be authentic. And don't let anybody um, impact or change your integrity. That's, I like that. You have to be those things. I like that. No, that's very good advice. All the rest can be learned with help and support and all, but you got to be you and you got to, you got to tell the truth. You got to be honest. Yeah. And you know, I seeing what some female politicians have been through over the years, you know, if anybody pays attention to stories in the news and 
some of the the trolling that's gone on, especially since social media has, has come along. It's amazing that women go into it at all, really, because most of us don't want to put up with crap like that, I'd say. But um, good on you for being able to do it. Like, it's, it's, it's important that women be represented. Like, how do we have our interests represented if there, if there are no women in politics? That's right. right? Yeah. We, uh, not just that, you know, the, the world needs us. It does. They need us because we bring something totally different, totally unique to the decision-making tables. Not that men are all wrong, but let's face it. We win the trophy hands down when it comes to using and trusting our intuition and to juggling everything from our kids and our partners and our meals and our laundry. We do all that without losing it most of the time. Right? Well, most of the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> But I mean, if we're doing 70% of the work, come on, yeah, we need at least 50% representation, right? So, all right, I have to wrap up now. This has been so much fun. I, I'm so glad I got to be part of this um, amazing opportunity here. Uh, and I'm sure this will be available online if anybody wants to rewatch any of the questions being answered, any of the presentations, and reach out to any of the women here today. I'm sure they would be happy to answer your questions if you have any further questions. So join us again on April 22nd for Conversations at the Royal presented by TD, where we will be discussing fatherhood and mental health, how to find your resiliency. So watch for your invitation to this special event. And thank you so much again for being here and being part of this. Have a great rest of your week, year.